Hey guys, it's April and welcome back to my channel. I have my bachelor's in criminal justice and a minor in psychology and I'm going to say that for the next 45 videos because I'm just so proud of myself. On top of that, I am a board member for a nonprofit called Voices for the Silence and I'm praying we have some awesome news to share with you soon. But in case you don't know, we are a nonprofit that helps missing persons, loved ones, and family get resources for their search and do pretty much just anything we can. So if you do have a missing loved one around West Virginia or surrounding areas, like I said, please get a hold of us and we'll do what we can. And we are here with another video in the Unsolved in West Virginia series. And today we are going to do another cryptid from West Virginia that's also in the Fallout 76 game, the Agua. It's also known as the Rivs Monster, the Holtz Monster, the Two-Headed Turtle, and the Gator Turtle. It is supposed to be from the prehistoric times, and it's a freshwater cryptid in the north central area of West Virginia and also into Pennsylvania. And it's known to be in the rivers of the Ohio, the Allegheny, and in the Monongahela, which we will just call the Mon from now on. And the Aguas are known to be 15 to 20 feet long and around 500 or 600 pounds. It's usually reddish brown and has either gold eyes or navy blue with a little gold in it. It also has serrated teeth. Ironically enough, not really for eating. Now it does look like an alligator mixed with a snapping turtle. They are very muscular reptile type creatures and have 9 to 12 bony areas down its body. It has a very powerful jaw and has four stubby legs, kind of like the alligator and turtle, I guess. It does have long claws, which help dig their dens and to hold on to the river bends. And they also have a large, heavy tail like an alligator. It has two heads and the upper shell gets smoother and shinier the older the aqua gets. It lives in water but can come up onto land. But once settlers moved to this area, they really started killing off the Agua creatures and pretty much just made it impossible for them to live there anymore. And that's why they're known as kind of rare creatures now. And before winter, Aguas will expand their den with their long claws. And they dig like little tunnels out from the den to store their food and supplies for winter. Then they do their their own type of hibernation until warmer weather. Now having two heads, their bodies are connected, but they are thought to be hermaphrodites, or at least something close to it. They are thought to have their female reproductive system on the left side and the male reproductive system on the right. But something that's a little interesting about the aquas is that anytime they see another other agua, they immediately mate and then just go on their way. They really don't have a mating ritual, so they just literally walk up to each other, go at it, and leave. Now, when aguas lay their eggs, it takes about 24 months for them to hatch. And that really depends on the water temperature, to be honest. They do lay around 10 to 12 eggs, and they're usually rough and a pale blue. And they lay these eggs every two years. They lay these eggs usually in their den and cover them up except for about a half an inch with dirt, debris, pretty much just anything. And if some of those siblings end up not making it, the ones that do usually eat them. So it kind of already cuts their reproduction less than 10 usually. And then the surviving aguas end up floating downstream in which predators will grab them. It is possible, which cuts their numbers even lower. So if you really think about it, there's not many agua that have that can be born fast. And that is why they allegedly have stayed rare creatures if you believe in them, I guess. So aguas are pretty much nocturnal because they hunt during the night. 
night. They will lay in their dens all the way till dusk, but then they make sure to come back home before dawn. And they usually use their teeth to catch the prey, just not necessarily to eat it because they swallow their prey whole. And they usually use their tail to hunt also. And they also use their tail as a weapon. And like I said, they prefer to eat their prey whole. And they usually do get deer, sometimes humans if they're near the river bend, and just larger creatures like that. Now they do strike fast at the things that are on shore. And if they miss, they will chase that thing down until they grab it. And usually they make sure to drown their victim before they bring it back to the den. They usually don't eat right away. They kind of save it for a later date. And if it needs to be on the defense, it pretty much just hides in its shell and waits until there's not a threat anymore and then kills that threat. Now let's go into some sightings of the Agua. Now it is rumored that Native Americans knew about this type of creature. But with their stories of the Agua, it is thought that they came up the Mississippi and Ohio River to that area. And they would tell people to not get too close to the edge of the water because Aguas would come up and grab them. And when the European settlers came here, they pretty much learned of the Agua through stories and legends. Now there was a settler that saw an Agua and ran back to its little town and got a ton of people to go ambush this Agua and kill it. It was about 444 pounds and they did end up killing it with wooden clubs. And then in Holt, West Virginia is another very well-known sighting of the Agua. A 12 year old boy was fishing with his family in Holt and the Agua just came right up to him and dragged him under. The family tried to search the waters but he was just absolutely gone. Several days later, the family heard this scratching type sound going across their house. And one of their kids looked outside and saw it was an agua. This same creature she saw grabbed her brother and dragged him under the water. And the family moved the next day. They were out of there. I can't even blame them. Now the Agua has been seen around Marion County a ton. And then in Fairmont, it was seen in about summer 2019. It was a typical Friday night in the summer of 2019. Nate Marino and Jake Byers would go fishing on the West Fork River after work with another friend. At around midnight, Nate recalls seeing something reflecting in the moonlight that looked like a large ball. I didn't really give much thought to it, but then as it kept swimming, I looked back and I could see what looked like a snake, a snake-like movement <clears throat> somewhere behind this ball. So, you know, going through it in my head, I'm trying to think, wh what am I seeing right now? And then I realize it's one, it's all one thing. You know, it's all one creature of some sort. As Nate turned to his friends to point out what he was seeing, Jake told him he saw the creature the previous week when he was catfishing in the same spot around 10 p.m. Jake recalled on that night they thought it was a person who fell into the river. He realized the creature wasn't human when he saw the snake-like tail. They now believe the creature is the fabled Agua monster that is said to live in the Monongahela River. This was way bigger than anything that we'd ever seen. Um, and I mean, just the size of the head in general was enough to kind of take your breath away. And the link. That, yeah, and I mean, when you put together that it's all one creature, it's the, the sheer distance between the head and the tail, you're like, oh my gosh, what the hell is that thing? And today, giant skeletons of these creatures have been found in Pawpaw Creek and the Mon. You need to look for like a dark shape underneath the water, a massive dark shape underneath the water. And it's known to knock over canoes and kayaks to try to get food. So if you go kayaking or canoeing in that area, please be careful if you believe in this type of thing. But that is all I have for the Agua. Thank you guys so much for watching. And this one was crazy to me because it's 
honestly, the cryptid, that's the most believable in my opinion. I could 100% believe that we have agua in our rivers. But thank you guys so much again for watching. Like and subscribe for me and hit that notification button. That way you're notified the next time I upload. I still have a GoFundMe going for Crystal Young. And if you have not watched that video, you need to go watch it so you know why her mom needs this BI so bad. I also have stickers for sale. They're $2 each and all proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation. So it is for a good cause. And thank you guys again just so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.